I guess one of the, the hardships that my family has faced uh, was the surroundings of the neighborhood. Um, my parents immigrated, my dad immigrated when he was 16, and um, obviously he wasn't looking for quality of the neighborhood. He was, he was looking for how much, like how cheap it was to live. So it never came to his mind that he would actually raise a family there. Um, <laughs> with that being said, uh, there, w there was a lot of violence, a lot of gang violence. Uh, I, was, I grew up with gang members uh, that were my friends, like in the beginning. Luckily, my dad was able to get papers th through um, the amnesty that I think it was Reagan gave out. Um, and so right away we have an advantage there because now my dad has papers and um, I like I see through pictures like when like at first my parents came here like oh my god you should see the apartments they were it's really sad like it's I mean the painting is horrible um, like you know like the stove is really like 1960 and like you could just tell the difference and then like once my dad got papers like you start to see like remodeling stuff like you see actual cabinets in front of the sink you know like just simple stuff like you know and I'm relating that to towards the undocumented people because actually you know I know people like my neighbors um, they don't have anything you know um, they are really struggling right now but I could tell you like my family like even though we did have papers like my dad being a janitor, like we still had like a lot of tr like how do you say it like troubles. Like I remember when it was uh, since my dad has found a value in Catholic education, um, he sent us. He was able to send us all to Catholic school all of our lives. And I remember when it was my little my little sister in elementary, and I was in high school, and my sister was in college. There'll be days when we wouldn't have anything to eat on the table. Um, the only thing we would have, I'm not joking right now, were tortillas and cheese. And we would make quesadillas, or we would you know, eat tacos and like put a little hot sauce in there. I mean, you grew up with like nothing, so like, it's kind of like, you're still grateful for that, you know? My, seriously, my dream is to become a teacher. Like, that's just my ultimate dream. I really want to. Um, there was, okay, I'm sorry. There was a teacher who really influenced my life. Um, he passed away uh, when I was a freshman in college. I'm sorry. And he actually inspired me to become a teacher because um, high school was not a great time for me. Uh, you know, like balancing out family at home and like schoolwork and then my parents telling me like, don't hang out with these, your friends anymore. Like, you know, the gang members and stuff. And like, um, he was really there, you know, for me and stuff. And I really found value in it. And I would always look forward to his class. I know that there's so many kids out there in my neighborhood and probably in even worse neighborhoods than mine that really need someone to like, at least like, just someone to talk to, someone like to be like there for you all the time, like unconditionally. Even when like, yeah, my parents were supportive, but I couldn't talk to them all the time. I want to be that person because if uh, there were people for me, then I could, I could be there for other people. And um, I really want to become a Spanish teacher. Uh, that's kind of selfish because I love, Sp I love Spanish. So, um, so, you know, basically just being there for a person and like helping them out and like knowing that maybe you didn't like make the next president or maybe that you didn't teach like you know the person who found a cure for cancer but knowing that you might have changed someone's life and like might have turned them around my family is very old school i like to call it old school um especially my mom she ever since i was a little kid she told me this is in your country at all this is i'm sorry the white man country you know so respect everyone because you're not always going to be respected. And at first I would be like, no, it's my country. Like, I was born here. OK, maybe it is my country. But the second part, the saying that, you know, every person has value, has dignity. You know, like, even though, like, I face, like, I, people have been so nice to me, you know, have shown me dignity and stuff. So obviously, 
I'm gonna have to do that because I feel like in my pers in my own personal beliefs, if you don't treat someone right and if you don't treat someone with respect, it's like, what are you even doing here? You know, like you're not. There's no purpose in your life because, I mean, I personally believe every person is a child from God, and you know, how would like when I die, <laughs> like how would God say, oh, well, you didn't treat this person right, and you're like, whoopsie, <laughs> you know, so. I don't know, I think value and like in everything, you know, because honestly life is a blessing, so yeah, I don't know.